morning. I am Marta Delgado, Undersecretary for Multilateral Affairs and Human Rights at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico. I would like to thank Chair Trisha Ray and Samir Saran, President of Server Rich Foundation, for their invitation to this event and also to Nisha Hola, who is moderating the panel. With the adoption of a feminist foreign policy in 2020, we hope to place Mexico as a relevant player that promotes gender equality and the human rights of women and girls. Uh, our office believes that uh, the gender perspective should be present in all international agendas. In the case of the technology agenda, the participation of women and, the, and girls must be a priority to promote their empowerment and overcoming the gaps that the digital work imposes. The government of Mexico considers that technologies are a central element in the creation of policymaking towards the sustainable development models in line with the provisions of the 2030 Agenda and other global development agendas. We believe that new technologies, well employed and nurtured, can considerably improve people's quality of life and allow individuals to access opportunities that were previously out of reach. However, we are aware that without due observation and regulation, they can increase the gap existing inequalities, including gender inequalities. For that reason, the main challenge that uh, we need to address is to bridge the digital divide both between and within countries, between women and men, and between girls and boys. We also need to harness information and communication technologies, recalling the need to emphasize the quality of access to bridge digital and knowledge gaps using a multidimensional approach. Mexico recognizes information and communications technology as a key catalyst for economic development and investment, with benefits for employment and social welfare, by reducing obstacles to economic participation, including the participation of women in the economic sphere. In this regard, it is important to continue promoting the empowerment of women and girls as it will make a decisive contribution to advance towards all sustainable development goals, emphasizing the need to adapt science strategies, technology, and innovation to address their empowerment, reduce inequalities, including the gender uh, digital divide. Technological changes has impacted almost all sectors of the economy and social dynamics. It creates opportunities to provide new sources of employment and income, as well as to allow developing countries to access opportunities that were previously out of reach. It has the potential to reduce or eliminate the barriers that exist towards the creation of well-being in societies, even in those groups of people that furthest behind, such as women and girls around all the world. However, we uh, are also aware of the challenges this unprecedented phenomenon. Currently, there is evidence that changes in digital technology have not occurred uniformly. The use of technologies for financial inclusion, for instance, has become a solid platform for sustainable development models. It uh, empowers vulnerable groups of people such as women, girls, indigenous people, and youth, amongst others, to face financial challenges and enhance the outcomes of their work. Our country develops mechanisms for financial inclusion, particularly for groups in vulnerable situations. Among them, we have the National Policy for Financial Inclusion, which seeks the expansion of financial products in the country to 77% of the population by 2024. With the support of technology in the financial system, we seek to reduce the cost of financial transactions and expand access to credit, 
generation, generating synergies with social programs and the expansion of financial infrastructure by the government of Mexico. In a few days, we will start a new chapter in the international climate regime. COP26 represents a significant opportunity to strengthen the synergies between governments, civil society, academia, youth, and the private sector. So we will promote the inclusion of the gender and human rights perspective through all the negotiation tracks uh, within the UNCCC in consistency with our feminist foreign policy. Although at COP26, the Mexican delegation will be smaller than usual. It will be represented mostly by women who will be in charge of leading negotiations of great relevance to our country, including these uh, matters of uh, technology. Nowadays, there is a considerable gap in incorporating gender considerations in technology-related mechanisms and processes in the UNFCCC, and the COVID-19 pandemics has exacerbated these inequalities. Uh, regarding this matter, the participation of women at COP26 will be essential to promote an intersectional perspective in financing and building capacities for the development of green technologies. We strongly believe that systematically addressing persistent gender gaps in the response uh, to climate change is one of the most effective mechanisms for building climate resilience and reducing emissions. And likewise, we will promote those specific resources directed to gender considerations that women can have a greater access and representation in technical and university careers that are oriented to the technological development of the country. The value of a feminist foreign policy is that it contributes significantly to the country's national development. One of uh, Mexico's priorities is leave no one behind. In this regard, having a feminist foreign policy will enable us to place women and girls at the center of the country's welfare policies, both at the national and international levels. In the case of technologies, they are used to teach through new techniques, as well as uh, in, to involve more women and girls in science, technology, engineering, and math careers. Their participation in this type of careers undoubtedly promotes the elimination of gender stereotypes and inspire other girls to participate in these areas that have traditionally been for men. It is therefore important to invest in the development of leadership skills in all women and girls. It is relevant to show them that women can develop any activity, including their participation in the political life of their countries, particularly in decision-making positions. Without their participation in the public sphere, the sustainable world that we want to achieve in 2030 will be impossible. Thank you very much for your attention.